it's Pete here and today I wanted to look at how do you raise partner's major suit when you're playing with the robot on BBO. So when playing with Gib, what sort of major suit raises do you actually play? Now for doing this, when considering raises, I like to break it up in how much support I have, three, four or five card support, and sort of what point range I've actually got. Do I have really weak, weak, invitational, game forcing, or some sort of slam interest? So that's what I sort of break it up into. And today what I want to look at is where I think it works like and what it could do better. So I'll give it a bit of a rating, uh, look at what you actually give up, what your bids actually are, and what the continuations are. So first of all, how good are they? So for this I like to break it up into what's its cost, how complex is it, and how accurate is it. So for this I've given it a rating out of 5. Um, so for complexity, uh, I've given it a three star rating, so it's it's about average. Uh, like it doesn't take up that many bids, so it's not that complex. But there are a couple of bids that are kind of hidden and hard to actually work out. Um, so it's a little bit complex, and if you're trying to work out what that raise is, it can be confusing. Uh, secondly, for cost, I think it's really low cost. So what are you giving up? So for this, what you look at. Uh, Bids that the like amount of bids that it occupies and how often you'd actually want to try and try and bid these. So the raises that BBO use don't use that many different bids. Um, so it doesn't have lots of artificial bids. So it's not that high a cost. So you're not giving up lots of different bids to make lots of different raises. Um, so you've got lots of other natural options that you're trying to use. And then for accuracy, I gave it sort of middle of the road. Um, it, it's got some differentiation, but it's got some parts that are missing and some bits that are a bit awkward that I find. Um, so I gave it three stars. I think there's definitely better raising structures out there if you want to improve your accuracy. But uh, let's look at uh, what they are. So here we've broken up the raises into three cards, four cards and five cards and the different point ranges that we've got. So basically, if you're really weak, uh, BBO doesn't have anything for three card raises, which nearly no raises really do. Um, four card raises, uh, various different raise structures that can have a bid for this, but in BBO it doesn't actually have that. So with this you're just meant to pass unless you want to try and squeeze it in somewhere else. And if you've got five card support, you can make a preemptive raise of one major, four major. This is typically zero to nine with like five card support and a singleton somewhere if you're vulnerable. Um, I do it if I'm not vulnerable, just like any time i got five card support typically. Um, so with five card support, you can still make the preemptive four major raise. If you've got uh, six to nine points, there's just one major, two major. This is pretty simple. Um, and if you've got four card support, it does the same for this. And this is one spot where certain raises differentiate out um, and highlight six to nine card, four card support to six to nine card, three card support. But this one doesn't. It just, you, you bid two hearts and you try and solve that later if you need to, if you need to compete. But it's harder for partner to evaluate whether to go to game because sometimes knowing if you've got a nine card fit is actually relevant for that. And if you've got uh, six to nine points with a uh, four made uh, five card suit, you just jump to four of your major. Okay, so what about if you've got invitational hands? So for this, uh, this is one of the tricky ones that is hard to find in BBO. So if your partner opens one of a major and you've got three card support with an invitational hand, what you actually do is you put that through the forcing one no trump bid. So you start by bidding one no trump, and then when partner continues the auction, you then typically bid three of their major. And this says partner had three card support and an invitational hand. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I like to try and show support straight away if I can. There's certain times that delayed raises are okay. I find it's better if you're stronger because sometimes the opponents compete and it gets a bit awkward. Uh, this one, it's also a bit awkward because it forces you to play forcing no trump, which sometimes I like to pass one no trump. And the other thing that I find difficult is that when you uh, respond one no trump, uh, there's certain continuations that partner can do where you never actually get promised three card support. You can show your invitational raids with a fit, but maybe it's like two card support. So uh, it can get a bit awkward some of the time about how to untangle it through that. 
but this is how they do it and most of the time it works. Um, so three card invitational raise starts by bidding one no trump which is forcing and then will typically follow up with three of the major. If you have four card support with an invitational hand it just goes one major three major so one heart three hearts or one spade three spades will show four card support with invitational values. Uh, same for five card support if you want to just make an invite that's how you do it as well. If you're forcing to game so 13 to 15 if you've got three card support you've got two options first of all if you're completely balanced a four triple three shape you can just bid three no trumps and offer three no trumps as an option um, if you aren't a four triple three shape typically what you'll do is you'll make a two over one bid or just bid a new suit and then show your three card support later so you'll typically bid two clubs and then maybe uh, support partner's suit subsequently so another delayed raise but this one's game forcing i'm a lot happier with this sort of one um, but this is how you do it. You, you start with a new suit and then support partner. Um, it's usually best to try and start with a game force if you can. So try bidding a suit at the two level. So, so like what I'm talking about is if partner opens a heart, sometimes you can bid a spade and I'll do that if spades are my only suit that I can mention. But usually setting up the game force makes it easier to show that three card support later. If you have a game forcing hand with four card support or more whether you're just for game or slam trying you go through jack b2 no trumps so you jump to two no trumps over partners one of a major this says i've got four card support and 12 or oh, game forcing values and yeah so four or five card support anything that wants to game force even if you've got like 20 points you'll go through this um so that encompasses all of those uh so these are the different bids that you can make uh i'll talk through some example hands and we can look through those so uh, let's jump in and look at uh, how to actually bid these hands so if uh, the robots open one spade uh, with three card support and 69 we just bid two spades if we have uh, four card support and 69 points and our partner opens one spade uh, again, we just bid two spades. They don't have a separate bid to say, partner, I've got four card support and six to nine points. If you're looking at five card support and six to nine points, uh, you can just jump to four spades. Uh, you like This hand's pretty borderline. I think this one's probably too good for a four spade bid, but if you do bid four spades, you're showing sort of zero to nine points with five card support. If you've got three card support and 10 to 12 points, what you do is when partner starts with a spade, we put this into the forcing no trump bid. And then partner will usually bid sort of like two of a minor or just a new suit or maybe two of their major, depending on what they got. But commonly it might be something like two clubs or two diamonds. And then you can follow it up by jumping to three of their major. And this will say partner, I've got three card support and 10 to 12 points. If you've got four card support and 10 to 12 points, uh, you just jump straight to three of a major straight away. So this is how you could describe a hand like this. If you've got four card support and a game forcing hand, this fits into the Jacoby two no trumps. So you jump to two no trumps, sets up a game force, promises four card support, and that's how you bid that one. If you've got like a slam interest one, so 16 plus points, again, you still just bid two no trumps and you'll find out more about partner's hand and work out whether you want to go to slam after this. So after our two no trump bid, I will talk about continuations later. Uh, we'll find out more information, um, but 16 plus we'll still go through two no trump. And here, three card support with a game force. What we start with is uh, we bid a new suit and then when partner either, they might rebid two spades or two no trumps. Um, if you're not interested in slam, you would just jump to four, four spades, not hearts, um, here. So you could bid four spades. Um, but if you were interested in slam, you could bid three spades because we've already set up a game force and then we're promising that we've actually got uh, three card support. So this is forcing and a way to actually show some interest in slam. So here, if we made our hand a bit stronger, such as this, with 16 points, you might be investigating when partners a minimum. So that's how you can uh, bid your three cards and four card supports when playing with BBO robots. So what when I talked about cost earlier, what sort of bids are we giving up 
uh, for playing the raises. So uh, first of all, it uses sort of two no trumps and three no trumps and also three hearts as um, uh, different raises. Two no trumps and three no trumps, I really don't think there's that much cost um, because when partner opens a major, you can typically bid something else and then show 10 to 12 points or 13 to 15 points and get to two no or three no if you need to. Uh, here, the three heart bid does have a little bit of a cost uh, in that. Um, you're using it for four card invite. You could use it for something else. So this one's got a bit of a cost associated to it. Can you find a better meaning for that and use a different raise? Maybe. Uh, the other thing that I find has a bit of a cost in the raises is the forcing one no trump. Uh, sometimes I like to pass one no trump, and if you're putting a raise through one no trump, especially an invitational raise, it makes it a lot more difficult for partner to pass. Um, so I find that does have a cost attached to it. But overall, it doesn't use up that many bids. It uses all the different no trump bids and all the different uh, raises of partner's suit bids. Uh, but nothing else. Uh, different raises that you might use, use something like three clubs and three diamonds and three hearts and those sorts of bids um, for different raises. Uh, this BBO structure doesn't do that, so the, the overall cost is a bit lower there. Okay, so let's now look at some continuations. Okay, so with this, um, back to this hand where we've got three card support and six to nine points where we've got our two spade rays. If partner bids a new suit here, this is a long suit trial, so three clubs, three diamonds, three hearts. These all show like three cards or longer in that suit. Interesting game and wanting partner to either just sign off in uh, three spades if they've got a minimum without help in that suit, or if they've got good help, they can uh, go to four spades. So here you can just sign off in three. Again, uh, here with four card support and six to nine, this is the exact same bid, so you would raise to two spades with this hand, so continuations are the same. Uh, five card support, where you might jump to four of a major. Uh, partner will generally pass this, it's pretty rare that they would bid on over this, but if they did, they've got four no trump Roman key card, or if they bid a new suit, this would be a first round control. Um, so all the five level bids are first round controls. Okay, three card support with 10 to 12 points. So there's the one we put through the forcing one no trump. So if we have an auction like this, uh, typically partner will either pass or bid four spades. If they do bid something new such as four clubs, this would be a queue showing first round control. Um, but obviously we've got the ace of clubs here. If we've got four card support and we do this by jumping to three spades. Over this, partner's bids, if they bid a new suit, uh, is just a control showing bid. So four diamonds shows first round control in diamonds. Otherwise, they'll either pass three spades or bid four spades, typically. Okay, uh, if we've got a game forcing hand uh, with four card support, so here when partner opens a spade, we can bid Jacoby two no trumps. Now there's the one with some interesting uh, continuations. So this is where you wanna try and learn how to show these different hands. Uh, first of all, um, any new suit is just a shortage. So if they bid three clubs, this would say, partner, I've got a singleton club. If they bid three diamonds or three hearts, it would show a singleton in the suit that they've actually bid. If they jump to four spades, this is just minimum balanced hand saying I'm not like, uh, this is the worst hand I can have for you. I don't have anything uh, worth going on. So four spades, minimum balanced hand. If you're there a little bit stronger, so like 15 to 17 with no singleton, they can bid three no trumps. Now, typically you'd open a no trump with a five card major and 15 to 17. So this would typically be like a six card spade suit, six, three, two, two sort of shape. And if you've got 18, 19 with no singleton, you can bid three spades. So uh, if you're balanced, four spades is the weakest, then three no, then three spades. Otherwise, if you have a singleton, you just bid your singleton there. Um, and if you've got 16 points with four card support, you go through Jacoby two no trumps. So same continuations. Um, and basically if partner bids four of a major, unless you're really interested in slam, you'll pass that. Otherwise, if you've got some interest, you would typically start cubiting first round controls after they show shortage or any extra values. 
if we've got a game forcing hand with uh, um, if we've got a game forcing hand with three card support that's interested in slam so let's say it goes two clubs and partner bids two no trump this hand you might still just bid four spades it's not that great a hand but if we want to slam try we do that uh, we can show three card support here and then partner can Q bid uh, first round controls if they're interested in a slam. So that's what their continuations are. So they're the different raises with BBO and how you can continue them. Uh, also, we've got uh, what you give up by playing them and my sort of thoughts on the ratings. Um, one extra thing I wanted to just highlight, which is the robots also play Drury. Um, Drury, I'm not going to delve too much into, but basically uh, it only applies when partner opens in third or fourth position. So if basically if there's a past hand and they open one major, so let's say we opened one heart, then two clubs here would say, partner, I've got a maximum past hand with a fit. Um, so Drury only applies, it's easy to miss this, but it's a two club bid as responder when you're already a past hand and it shows a maximum past hand with a fit. That's the final different raise that uh, BBO Gib robots play. Hope this helps uh, clear up any confusion or help you understand how to actually raise with uh, BBO robots without having to always deal through all the different meanings. Thanks all for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.